If I mention the word worm, most people would think a creature with long body. I mean, vermiform is a word that literally means shaped like a worm. But what if the worm is not shaped like a worm? Wouldn't that be challenging the concept? That is a weird question. But it is the case of the pig butt worm. So, let me broad up the question. What exactly is pig butt worm? The pig butt worm is a species called Catopterus pugaporcinus. Pugaporcinus literally means pig butt, by the way. If it's not obvious enough, it's because it resembles a pig butt. Kinda. It is part of the Polychaeta class, the bristle worms. Looks like a mismatch, isn't it? Well, let's go two major rank lower. It is part of the Catopteridae family. Still looks like a mismatch? Indeed. So, before we talk about the pig butt worm, let's talk about the family first. Catopteridae is usually known as the parchment worm, or parchment tube worm. The name means bristle wings, which I'll talk about later. As with other Polychaeta in the clade Sedentaria, Catopteridae members are filter feeders that live inside the tube they construct, so they live a sedentary life. Usually, members of the Sedentaria clade have two distinct parts of their body, the usual worm-like part and the filter feeding appendages at the front, which can be quite diverse. Unlike most of them, Catopteridae members have three distinct body parts, anterior, middle, and posterior. The posterior part is typical for the Polychaeta, the usual vermiform body. The middle part acts as a water pump to obtain oxygen and food into their tube and remove waste and debris out of their tube. The anterior part contains organ to feed. They capture prey by spreading mucus net into the surface. They will move towards the opening of their tube, spread their aliform notopodia, and then secrete the mucus net from said organ. Oh, by the way, aliform means wing shape and notopodia is the dorsal part of their leg, and their legs are usually bristles, which is why their name means bristle wings. Not only their adult form is unique, their larvae are also unique among the polychaeta. Their larvae are shaped like a barrel and have one or two ciliated bands at the middle part. It also has a large buccal funnel, which is basically their mouth, like lampreys. Their larvae are around 0.4 to 2.5 millimeters which is relatively big for polychaeta larvae, but not the biggest. What's interesting about their larvae is that they stay as larvae for several months or even over a year. Oh, by the way, their larvae are planktonic, meaning they drift in the water, not sedentary like the adults. Okay, now that we know about the Catopteridae family in general, we can talk about the mystery and discussion of the pig butt worm. The pig butt worm specimens were collected from deep mesopelagic waters of Monterey Bay, California. It was first observed and collected in 1st October 2001. Up till 2006, they found a total of 8 specimens of this creature. All of them were found drifting in the water, far away from the seafloor. All of them are similar in form, but ranging from 10mm to 21mm in total length. Their form has some resemblance to the Catopteridae larvae. But not exactly. At this point, it is still a mystery of what they are. So the authors processed the first and third specimens to sequence and analyze their DNA. Then, they found out that it's closely related to the Catopterus genus. So, it's concluded that they must be a member of the Catopteridae family, and was described as Catopterus purgaporcinus. Now, let me just remind you, adult Catopterus are supposed to live inside their tube, sedentary, not drifting in the water like these creatures. On the contrary, their larvae are supposed to have ciliated bands on the middle part. Not only that, their larvae are supposed to have cutting spines. But these creatures are relatively smooth, you know, like a pig butt. Also, they are large, compared to the supposed size of the catopterid larvae that is. They can even be 10 times larger than catopterid larvae. There is, of course, a simple hypothesis of they are a completely unrelated group of creatures, but DNA analysis said otherwise. They are clearly related to the known Catopterus. Well, they are technically Catopterus, based on the DNA analysis. What's with their form anyway? What are we looking at exactly? Well, in this picture, we are looking at their dorsal. 
This part is their anterior, basically the mouth. In this image, we are looking at their posterior side, aka their butt. But this is them when they contract their posterior side. When they are relaxed, they look like this. Now this one looks a lot more like the typical catopterid larvae, don't you think? When they drift in the water, they position their mouth downward at all times. The reason why they live like this might be simply because their anterior parts are heavier. They continue drifting even when they are observed in the aquarium. When they are injured, the butt-like part shriveled and they sink to the bottom. Which is really bad for them by the way, but good to know I guess. They also produce mucus cloud that sticks to their butt, both in the natural habitat and in the aquarium. It is assumed that they feed by collecting particles in the mucus, which is quite similar to how the typical adult catopterid feed. Oh, by the way, the authors also collected the fecal pellets of these worms, and those pellets contain skeletal remains of several planktons, so at least we know that they do indeed feed. The authors did some tests for their behavior, as expected. Even with all stimulus, they aren't observed to swim or settling down. Basically, they just float. So it's likely that it is indeed their lifestyle. They are also observed to produce bioluminescence when exposed to physical stimulation. Now, after much tests and observations, do we have a conclusion on whether they are adult worms or larvae? Well, the exact answer is no, we don't. We still aren't sure. But the authors argue that they most likely are adults. The simple logic is like this. Remember that the 8 specimens have different sizes, ranging from 10mm to 21mm? The argument is, if they are larvae, the smaller one would be younger larvae, while the bigger would be older larvae. Intuitive, right? So, what about it? Larvae typically develop adult characters as they grow. Basically, their characters will vary based on their age. Meanwhile, these 8 specimens are similar to each other but with different sizes, so they most likely have reached adulthood, and this is indeed the adult form. But, the authors did not find evidence of reproductive organs, or any reproductive behavior in general, so we cannot be sure of that yet. Now, I'm actually quite curious of how their larvae would look like if they are indeed the adult form. But the answer might be boring, which is, well, simply similar to other catopterid larvae which means it is also similar to the adult pig butt worms. It's a thing called pedomorphism, where the adult resembles the larvae, or at least have characters of the larvae. Pedomorphism is actually quite common, like the one you see in axolotl. The gills of adult axolotl are typically larvae characters, but the adult retain it. It might also be the case in the pig butt worm, but who knows? What's quite funny is that the phylogenetic analysis to uncover the pig buttworm actually led to the discovery that the previously named Catopterus pariopedatus is actually multiple species. So who knows what kind of information will we uncover in the future. For now, let's just learn what is known. And that's all for now.